Is it true that single precision calculation can degrade your sound in pure data? Like it seems to be the case for this cosine in a very long test buffer. Well, the test is the extreme. I will play this sound later. But first, let's have a look at the details of the floating point format. The single precision float has 8 exponent bits and 23 bits in fraction, the significant bits. There's also an implicit significant bit, and even though this one is always high, the total precision is 24 binary digits. The absolute range of the float is huge, more than a trillion times a trillion times a trillion. Twenty-four binary digits translate to a precision of seven or eight decimal digits. But the default representation of a float shows no more than six significant digits, at most, no matter if the number is small or large. Limited precision also means that if you want to add a small number to a large number, like it's done in this case. Some bits of precision of the small number are used to represent the larger number. So the precision of the small number is eaten by the large number to a certain extent, or maybe even completely, depending on the ratio between numbers. How about dynamic range? When compared to the data types which are used for audio cards, 16-bit int has a range of 96 decibel. The dynamic range of a 24-bit int used for production is 144 decibel. Integers have a fixed resolution over the complete range, but this is not the case for floating point numbers which have an exponential rise. The floating point numbers are uh, have a good resolution in the low numbers range. But as the numbers rise, resolution degrades. It happens to be the case that 32-bit floats can express all the integers which can be expressed by the 24-bit int. And in addition to that, also a lot of fractional numbers. So, as a whole, the floats have a better resolution than the 24-bit ints. In this sense, there is no reason to worry about the single precisionness of the floats. But the floating point numbers are also used for different purposes. For example, for fractional indexing, when we want to play uh, a sound file or a buffer at fractional speed. With small indexes, the resolution allows for interpolation, no problem. But as the numbers rise, resolution evaporates till the point where there is no fraction in between any number. So, for large buffers, like it is the case with my test tone, it means at the buffer start there is not so much of a problem yet. It sounds like this. But now I set the pointer to the latter part of the table and then there's a real problem with the interpolation. Well, it is clear that single precision floating point numbers cannot be used for this purpose. Let's have a look at double precision pure data. This is in a very experimental state at the moment, but the test is repeated here with double precision numbers. The precision of these numbers is so huge that a buffer of any length represented in a computer can be played without problem. So the same test as before, with the single precision numbers and large buffer, is repeated here, but now with 
double precision numbers. I've also computed how many integer index numbers can be represented by a data type. For single precision this is 2 to the power of 24, over 16 million samples. That is the length which was used in the test. This translates to 380 seconds with my default sample rate. That is more than 6 minutes, but in double precision, 2 to the power of 53 samples can be indexed. That is 9000 trillion samples, or 0 0.2 trillion seconds, or 3 billion minutes, 56 million hours, 2 million days, over 6000 years. That is more than 6 millennia. I know, this is completely ridiculous. But at least it shows that double precision numbers are comfortable to use.